I am Jeffrey Villardwen in the Principality of Serbia campaign from the beta version 0.92 of the Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project, a mod for Medieval 2 Total War. The campaign is on very hard, very hard, and Russia is apparently pronounced Russia in the local language, pardon my terrible Serbo-Croatian. So either I will end up mispronouncing everything because I do not know the language, or I may be complaining about spelling issues if I do know the language. Lifthrashir is currently the main scripter of this mod and he is a fantastic scripter, one of the best around, so you can expect some interesting campaign announcements, developments, turns and twists. Hopefully we will come across some interesting things as we proceed, and some minor stuff is already happening. Omar Khayyam, an important Persian poet of this period, has died. Regnum Norman Glorum and the Kingdom of Scotland are now allies. Veliki Zupan is a promising commander, and our Council of Nobles wants this place that I do not know how to pronounce. The Murabitun are still mighty, and Serbia is at the bottom of the heap in every category, as you expected. Zupan Uros is reporting that Ragusa seems to have a strong garrison, but of course they would die instantly if charged by a general. The only worry is whether the rebels of Ragusa also have a general. We have no spy at the moment to find out. Back in Ras, where our Veliki Zupan is having a word with our Council of Nobles about our next course of action, while Zupan Euros commissions the building of a grain exchange in Skoda, and not only. He finds the time to get married to a charming lady of noble descent, Snezana of Sokograd. Zupan Urus is now Stratigos of Dioclea, while Veliki Zupan is Stratigos of Rascha. The Imperium Romanum Sanctum, that is the Holy Roman Empire, is now allied with the Kingdom of Hungary. It is unusual that neighbors are signing alliances, on the other hand, they are AI factions, so they should be allies, because they are all on the same side and should be fighting just us. We are still in the year 1133, nothing has changed much in the last six months in our vast kingdom. The grain exchange is slowly being built in Skoda, and here is a historical event, courtesy of Lithrasia and the mod's researchers. A papal bull titled Omne Datum Optimum has granted the first privileges to the Knights Templar. We have recruited our first agent, a spy in Ras. Queues are stalled as we are strapped for cash. And on to 1134, and the mighty of the world are even mightier. The time for our next adventure of conquest has come, and Veliki Zupan heads north to attack that unpronounceable place. Your will shall be obeyed. We march. He is joined by our scouts stationed in Skoda. Move out. Combining troops. Leave your mercy behind, men. We shall show them none. Their fate is sealed, my lord. They are besieged. The place we are attacking is defended by a local baron of some sort named Pribislav. He has 700 men under his command. Show no mercy to our people's enemies. Attack! They are not our people's enemies. They were just quietly minding their own business until we attacked them. Let's say we wanted to bring civilization and democracy to their backward commune. So here is our general. Serbia has no pre-battle speeches, which is a bit of a shame, but it saves time. 
and this is the unpronounceable place we are about to conquer. Isn't this incredible? I believe this is a settlement from the Third Age mod, and it looks amazing. The only downside of it is that it has only one road, so there is not much room for strategy. The enemy soldiers are milling around in their village square. Here is another look of this amazing village from above. Our army is slowly moving up the hill with our general at the front. There are some units coming in from a side road, but in the end, all roads converge onto a single street leading up to the town plaza, so it does not really matter how you deploy your army, there is only one way to get there. There are only some pathetic militia in the village, some levy archers and some peasantry dressed in rugs, and some uh, militia spearmen armed with a spear and even a shield. The militia spearmen even have helmets. The levy archers begin to shoot arrows, which is the signal for our general to attack. He charges the archers and their entire unit gets obliterated. These Druzina models are too much. They are so amazing. The enemy captain fights on, he is bloodied but will not run, he dies a hero's death. With that unit of archers wiped out, now comes the turn of the village spearmen. The village spearmen are charged by our general and the enemy captain is slain. He was not a general, he was only commanding some peasants that were only used to killing chicken. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. So the uh, enemy soldiers regroup in the town plaza, our general prepares for another charge. The archers here are about to fire fully. They get charged before they can fire off the arrows and they are all slain. The enemy are badly bloody, they have lost half their men. Now our enemy has two companies of spearmen left and um, it is time to bring up our infantry. Men 
are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. So our scouts arrived and uh, made a uh, feint to cause the enemy spearmen to come out of the village square. Unfortunately, the spearmen did not charge. They did not really want to leave the comfort of their village square. Here they decided now to make a move and attack one of our infantry units. And there's another infantry unit at the back. They were supposed to attack the rear, so a general could hit the flank of the enemy but they just charged everywhere in a roundup way so our general pulls back to wait for a better opportunity to charge the enemy spearmen. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. And so the enemy spearmen make a mistake. They try to attack both units at once. Our general charges them. Unfortunately, it was not a very effective charge. He pulls out to cycle. These charges, he's killed a few people, so far I think we haven't lost a single horseman, or maybe we've lost one. So our enemy here begins to waver, they're charged again, and this time they're broken and they run back to the village plaza, but they get rallied straight away, so they're charged back out. This is the problem with these peasants fighting so close to the village square. So they're out and they simply get rallied in the town square. You cannot break them. And so our general keeps cycling his charges, trying to kill as many of the enemy as he can. There is a little bit of strategy involved, but not really much. And probably we would have done just as well if we had just left the general in melee for the whole duration of the battle. The problem is it's such a narrow space, and with the enemy in the town plaza, there's not really any room for strategy. So our general has more or less killed that unit and now he charges the other spear unit. These spearmen are completely worthless. They might as well have been holding spoons rather than spears. They are only good in giving our generals severance of experience. So there are still a few enemy soldiers left. Here they are. And they will defend their village square to the last man. And so they are thrown off in the air with that final charge of our general. My lord, our men are in command of the city. The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. All civilized peoples will be awed by the victory we have won here today. That was a quick and easy slaughter. Our general's bodyguard lost 19 men, 
but they killed 575. <laughs> Your enemies lie dead before me, my king! These people will bow to you as their lord! Our mission was successful. We have been rewarded with some scouts, but they have high upkeep, so we will just keep one company of those. A veteran warrior and a notorious berserker have joined the bodyguard of our Veliki Zupan. We have already tripled the size of our kingdom. Army upkeep is crippling us, we may have to concentrate on recruiting volunteers in our army. Militia seem to cost too much. A young chap named Zvietoza Zorich, with a basic orthodox education, is appointed governor by our Veliki Zupan. The Murabitun, who must be the Moors, have made an alliance with the county of Portugal. We could not find any volunteers to guard Ras on Sundays, so we had to recruit some peasants to do the job. A grain exchange has been completed in Skodar. Thanks to our new market building, we are now the 23rd most developed country in the medieval world. Hearing the news, the peasants send over a diplomat to discuss trade. Our people have something to discuss. Glad to agree on this. Another suggestion from your leader for us? We agree to trade, and they seem happy enough, but they do not think much of our idea of bashing some rebels. You have further proposals? Very well, we are listening. No, it would seem you are not very I... reasonable. Farewell. The Byzantines also want trade rights. We come bearing word for you. News of that new grain exchange must have traveled far and wide. Magnific Excellent. What else would you suggest? We agree to trade, which pleases them. It's Another proposition? We shall listen, of course. We offer them an alliance, to which they agree. Excellent. They also eventually agree to our proposal to attack some rebels. This was a good day for our peoples. The Cuman Khan is dead. We are now allied to the Roman Empire, not the Holy Roman Empire, the other one. We now have our first merchant. Zvietoza Zorich has been given the privy seal from our Veliki Zupan, which seems to mean a lot to him, so his loyalty increases. We have received a small gift from the Council of Nobles. We are still at the very bottom of the hip in the overall ranking. Everyone everywhere is busy making peace and signing alliances. Thank you for watching.